shadows, head symbol of ego. Shiva cuts off the head of Ganesh. It is symbolic. Sanatan Sanskriti uses the story Shiva cutting off the head of Ganesh as symbol to explain that which cannot be explained otherwise and beyond finite understanding as well. On the face of it, this story seems to make gods look finite and source of criticism by the ignorant ones. Shiva is not omniscient here, neither is Ganesh, but Mother Parvati is distraught because Ganesh is beheaded. The other gods and goddesses participated in a war and lost to Ganesh. Truly, this story suggests that all our omniscient, omnipotent and omnipresent gods that symbolically exist in each one of us as potentialities behave in an ordinary, inhumanly manner. This we see around us on a day-to-day -day basis. But at a deeper level, this story is symbolic and in a very beautiful manner explains light lurking from within. Ganesh was created by Parvati without Shiva. Ganesh stopped Shiva from entering his own house. As a result, Shiva beheaded him and replaced his head with an elephant's. Parvati is the universe and Shiva is its God and the son of Parvati is us, human beings, creation of Parvati as Ganesh. Any creation of the universe that behave without God's sanction or approval cannot exist for long. Ganesh was obstructing the God Shiva from entering the universe, Parvati. He was behaving in a manner that shows his utter ignorance and disregard for Shiva, the higher consciousness. Such a behavior is not acceptable. This is the way each one of us behaves in this world of duality. Therefore, Shiva beheads him Head is the seat of all ego. Thus Shiva destroys it to remove all ego and its associates, ignorance, anger, inacceptability to recognize and accept truth. Shiva replaces it with an elephant's head. An elephant is symbolic of being non-violent, strong and wisest of animals. So this way Shiva destroys ego and replaces it with wisdom. Ganesh becomes the leader of the army of Shiva, the friends of Shiva known as Gana, representing those of us who become devout of ego and naturally become leaders or initiates of the Supreme Master because of the wisdom. In the yogic lore, these army of the associates of Shiva, they are the friends known as Gan. They were the ones who were always around him, close to him, though he had his disciples, wife and many other admirers. His private company was always of Gana's. They are destroyed, they are described as distorted, demented beings. It is said that they had limbs without bones coming out of the odd parts of their bodies. So they were described as distorted 
and dismented beings. They were just different from who we are. They never spoke any of the human languages, instead spoke in utter cacophony as communication between them and Shiva. When somebody is initiate, the way the master communicates to him is not understood by ordinary human beings. So this language as a message, as a medium of communication between Shiva and his initiates is known as cacophony, a language that nobody understood. So human beings described it as total chaotic cacophony, but the Ganas were the ones that he has really, he was close with. Ganesh, because of his elephant trunk, the boneless part is known as the head of the chief of Ganas, the army as Ganapati. Shiva is called as Ganesh father. This shows that in ignorance we may behave in a manner contrary to God. But God removes our ego. God represents the ultimate master and makes us wise. Master shows us the way like a father. Ganesh is to be remembered as the removal of all obstacles and be invoked before all undertakings. Symbolically, this explains our, explains our wisdom should be used to plan ahead and remove our obstacles and a review of our plans before any undertaking. This shall decrease our obstacles and problems in the future and ensure its success. Sanatan Dharma leaves you free to understand anything as you like and for this understanding to change and grow as you learn more. The story of Shiva beheading Ganesh as a divine Leela enacted as a play. Parvati is the form of Devi, the supreme energy. In, in the human body, she resides in the earth center or Muladhar as Kundalini. It is said, when we purify ourselves of impurities that bind us, then the Supreme Master automatically comes as an awareness dawns. This is why Shiva comes unannounced as Parvati was taking shower. Nandi, Shiva's bull, who Parvati first sent to guard the door, represents the divine temperament. Nandi is so devoted to Shiva that his very thought is directed to him and he is able to easily recognize Shiva as he arrives. This shows that the attitude of the spiritual aspirant is what gains access to Devi's abode, the Kundalini energy. One must first devote this attitude of devotion, devotee, before hoping to become qualified for the highest treasure of spiritual attainment which Devi alone grants. Parvati took the mock of turmeric paste from her own body and with it created Ganesh. Yellow is the color associated with the earth's center where the Kundalini resides, the energy and the existential bioenergy resides and Ganesh is the deity, the wisdom is the deity who guards this psycho center. Devi needed to create Ganesh 
who represents the earthbound awareness as a shield to protect the divine secret from the mind not yet ready. It is when this awareness begins to turn away from the objects and beings of the world towards the divine as Nandi had that the great secret then the great secret is revealed shiva is the supreme master ganesh here represents the ego bound individual jeev when shiva the master comes the jeev the individual guided by the cloud of ego does not recognize him that's what happens the most the time Master appears because of this ego sense we do not recognize and maybe may even end up arguing or fighting with him. Therefore, it is the duty of the master to cut off the head symbolic of our ego. So powerful is this ego, however, that at first the master instructs, master's instructions may not work. Shiva's army failed to subdue Ganesh, ego. It often requires a tougher approach, but eventually the compassionate master in his wisdom points away. Devi threatens to destroy the whole creation after learning of Ganesh's demise. This indicates that even ego thus dies the liberated jeev loses interest in his temporary physical vehicle, the body, and begins to merge into the Supreme. The physical world of conflict and duality is here represents, represented by Devi, Shiva's concept. This permanent creation is the form of Devi. This impermanent creation, the world, of duality is a form of Devi. To Devi this body belongs, whereas the unchanging absolute is Shiva to which, which belongs to the soul. When ego dies, the external world which depends on ego for its existence to disappears along with it. It is said that if we want to know the secrets of the world, which is the manifestation of Devi, then we must first receive the blessings of Ganesh. Shiva restoring life to Ganesh, replacing the head with an elephant means that before we can leave the body, the master first replaces our small ego with big or universal ego. This does not mean we become more egoistic. On the contrary, we no longer identified with the limited individual self, instead with the large universal self. Thus our life is renewed, becoming one with that truly benefit creation. It is however only a functional ego that like the one Krishna and Buddha kept. It is like the thin string trying to trying the liberated consciousness to our world solely for this benefit. Ganesh is given the dominion of the Ganas, a general term denoting the class of humans ranging from insects, animals and humans in subtle and celestial beings. These various beings all contribute to the process of governing the creation. Everything from natural forces like a storm and earthquake to elemental qualities like fire and water to the functioning of the body's organs and actions from all different things. Enough for now.